We just we'll start recording. Okay, so um, we've got uh, a meeting today regarding people's original questions. How do I initiate this universal or community trust in my community? What are the steps that I need to go through? Um, and so we've got some new people uh, on the call and also people who have, let's say, are seasoned in, in the steps um, and uh, are here to share their experiences of how this has changed their life for the better. Um, so we've got Dragonfly Pictures on doing this recording for us. Um, and so over to you, Rob. You've brought some people today to ask some questions about what it is we do. That's right. Yeah. Hi there, uh, everybody. And uh, yeah, we've got some clarifying questions about the process and and then essentially we just want to tick the boxes going through each step, making sure that anyone who's uh, resonating with this process understands exactly what it is for each step so that there's no mistakes and you're not setting yourself up for any fail going forward and, and you, you know exactly what it is that you need to do, exactly how to uh, uh, define everything when asked any questions, what to do, you know, so just so that you're, you're completely clear and all the steps are, are laid out for you. Um, so we've got a list of questions, 010. Should we just start with, with those? That These are questions that myself, uh, my friend here, my mother and, and a, a lady from Stroud uh, from your last presentation, we've written down a, li a list of questions. Is, is it OK to just jump yeah. straight into those? Yeah. 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 OK. So, Paul, have you got what's the, yeah. where should we start? <laughs> well, maybe I could start by actually sort of reading some of the steps that are uh, on, on the page uh, and then sort of ask the questions as we go through them. So, um, of course, it says to start with the make a proton email address download the kindness credits claim form, um, and then add the following to the kindness credits claim. Add the legal fiction title you kept until now. Add a postcode and house number for your council tax to be discharged. Now, for example, if one does not have a fixed rent or, um, or mortgage, um, what do we include as an amount to discharge uh, or do we not? Well, it, there's two ways you can do it. You can do it just for yourself. So if you haven't got any of those charges, then well done for not being a Vatican debt slave and crediting your own slavery to the degree that most of us do, first of all. Right. Um, and if you are in that position, you can use these accounts then the structure to stand surety to other people. So in much the way that Rob's doing at the moment, he hasn't got any liabilities such as those in his own title, in the title that he's been using. What is really important is that when people have read that uh, information on the site, um, they're not sure, or like you said about legal jargon or even legal fiction, what is my legal title? Um, mm. So it's the name that you've been using to define yourself as. You put that in the box there. Um, mm. And just to cover this part, we've just simplified the website. So... Um, there's a new site now at universalrawcommunitytrust.com that's just gone live. It's basic. Um, we've tried to cut out a lot of the information that was there because simply it's not needed now because so many people have shown their due diligence and, and, and done their investigation, tried these other things and arrived at this point. So if you are lo already looking for universal law, you don't really need the explaining about the legal fiction and things like that to the degree that it was on the old site. So um, we've just put a page in, 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 the, in the new site of this, in the facts about the fiction. And it's a blank page because you can't have facts really about fiction, can you? Um, the, <laughs> yeah. You know, it's, it's to start to just to jog people, to, just to jolt people's thinking and say, hang on a minute, what is it? These words that I'm using and these these things that I'm doing, why am I doing them? And who's the beneficiary of the actions that I take them to? Um, mm. And um, so uh, we've simplified the site. Um, and if you go on there now, actually, you can have a look. Uh, so if it's working now, I've told you that. It's, it's, so it's universallawcommunitytrust.com. So um, what was it? So universallawcommunitytrust.com? Yes. Um, yeah. And uh, that should be published now. It's like I say, it's basic. And you can create your kindness credit account off there. 
we have created the contact us box so it's a little bit more comprehensive with a few instructions in there of how to use it because it seemed that by the time somebody had got down to the bottom of the page they'd forgotten what the steps were to do on the assignment of consent boxes and it's really important I think at this point to explain to people that it is your consent that you have no idea what that has been incorporated to be implied to mean that you are assigning back to yourself. You are not creating a trust that is separate from yourself. You are creating mm. a structure that you are all things within it. Uh, you are the executor, you are the trustee, you are the beneficiary, you are the uh, grantee or grantor of the rights and you are the executor of the deeds that you decide and determine with the asset that you have just assigned back into your hands so mm. for me that okay. was layman okay right. and this is the problem that we find obviously with lots of um let's say education that or schooling or programming that we've had um what is it's all about definition what is simple and layman for me is not going to be simple and layman for the next individual and so on and so forth mm, yeah. So that's why we have to do this, you know, uh, many, many times it appears because many people's perspectives, you know, we look at the same thing and see in so many different ways and we do complicate things. So have you got any questions for me there about what I just said? Does anybody not comprehend what it is that I just said about the assigning of your consent back into your own hands for you to stand uh, as, as all titles? Uh, in your own life, really. Um, I well, you've mentioned the word um, assigning back your assets um, towards it's the consent. end of your so you, yeah. yeah, yeah. I said your consent at the moment is granting uh, what is implied to be equitable rights as asset to a legal fiction that mm. is not yours, right. And that is really the facts about the fiction. Fiction can only exist because we grant our rights to a legal fiction that is not ours. And we buy the rights back then as a privilege contaminated by the corporation that we have assigned those rights to. So when they say, the corporation say, we are ruled by consent, that is true. We just consented to it by agreeing to use the legal fiction. Yeah. Now, when you reserve your rights, you don't even know, most people don't know how, until you investigate and show your due diligence how, what rights I've even got. We've got something called unalienable rights. So we all start at that point. So unalienable, we split the word up. Unalien, yeah. a charge. A lien is a charge and you therefore you are cutting out administration and definition of administrative systems and processes out of your life completely and you are reserving your rights from being implied to be consented to be utilized in commerce okay great is, is what you're doing yeah so when you put the mm -hmm. legal fiction that name that you've been using all your life in that box and the uh, there's a there's a uh, retire from using the credit in the legal fiction box there and in place of a contact box you're going to put the email address of the proton email that you've just created and they can make them for free at protonmail.me i think it's changed to now or com and um make a free one there and just fill out the box then with the account numbers amounts this is replacing the kindness credit claim form because so many people were saying well we you know, get to that point say well where's, where's, i now need to contact the trust or the people who were given their five hours to ask a simple question where's the kindness credit claim form so we're making the kindness credit claim form off the back of the information that you all put into those boxes so mm. you'd be as comprehensive or as as uh, you know as individual as you want on there um uh, whether you're going to put one account on each that's up to you 
you might want to just do a water account first of all to test the water as it were to see <laughs> whether it's drinkable or not no whether to see that whether it's something that you want to continue or not because it is you know it's it's too good to be true for most people um because we've been taught that what's good can't be true and so anything that's good i'm gonna you know hesitate and about uh, i'm going to doubt my ability to be able to determine whether i should trust my own instincts or not is what we've been indoctrinated with so uh, it's up to you you can put your mortgage statement the uh, mortgage account in there you can put your credit card debit cards any loans your bank account details your company registration number in there um, because the structure discharges all of your tax liabilities um mm. your company would convert into a kind of credit account uh, accounting system in the background so anything that you have converted your energy into uh, for slave tokens for exchange for example uh, as a business you will have an accounting system that converts it into another currency that is tax-free and to keep this third party interloper of this terrorist system out of your lives completely and obviously everything is legal whatever the definition of legal is but more importantly it's lawful and that's where we're aiming at all the time. The administrative system, adding to the administration of the law is not lawful because you're adding to it. And that's why we have the different definition of legal. What we've done is we've taken legal, held it up into the light of the law, and obviously it's smashed itself against itself yeah. in doing that because the, 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 the way that we have replicated the things that these corporations have said is legal, when we do them back to them in exactly the same structure, they are determining that their actions are unlawful. And that's why we did this. Sure. So, so if it's unlawful, and they're standing there and saying, you can't do this, you can't buy debt, you can't discharge charges using asset against, uh, against debt for uh, you know, like a mortgage, so, well, if we can't do it, then by your determination, dear judge, you've just dissolved the hypothesis that mortgages and debt equity swaps are legal or lawful by us doing it back to them. So yeah. all you're doing really is you're creating a, a what you would call an insurance in the commercial system, surety uh, under equity. You are indem indemnifying yourself F uh, uh, and ensuring yourself away from being implied to be uh, consenting to commerce. So then there has to be a contract. Now, so we've got, let's go to that part. Uh, who am I making a contract with? Uh, we stand there in our common law mindset and say, I haven't got a contract with a private corporation. And the private corporation just simply turns around and says, hello, who are you? And you use that yeah. name. The minute that you use that name, obviously, you know, you're in contract. So yeah. it's not so much I need to learn how to do something new. I just need to stop doing the thing that I've learned how to do, which is to com consistently commit fraud, really, because I'm claiming something that is not mine. Now, if I go outside and I take your car without your consent, you know, and I know that you can call the police and say that I've stolen it because i have taken it twocked it without your consent if i pick up a copyrighted logo such as mickey mouse for example you'd think that that you know i haven't got the right to go and, and create myself some plastic ears and and call them mickey mouse ears you know and sell them in the shops we all know what that is the copyright and, and piracy so we're pirating yep. on somebody else's intellectual property and that's what we've been doing all the time. We have been pirating on crown copyright logos and titles and trademarks and, and claiming them as ours. And that is what gives birth, then bursts us into the administrative system. Yeah. Now we've, well, have we got any questions about that? That's all very clear to me, actually. Um, particularly, well, maybe um, a question sort of uh, in terms of uh, advice and to those that um, want to learn more about the, the specific, you know, the, the, the language that's being used. So uh, maybe uh, what, learning about the universal law, particularly, is it worth learning about trust law? 
Uh, can you give some particular sort of um, no? Um, um, and the reason why to, not to is that no, completely. I, I, we suggest that you discharge everything in your mind that you have ever been taught before you get to this point, and you come at this from an indefinable state of mind. Right. I, I don't know who I am, I don't know where I'm from, I don't know what I'm doing here, but apart from uh, the, the well, none of us do. And this is actually called in their system, a quiet title equivalent. Now, keeping it on the QT is something that you might have seen in old films, depending on how old you are, they would you know, have some blood or some barrister or somebody from the cabinet tapping their nose or and saying keeping it on the QT. That is quiet title. And right. quiet title in the Black's Law Dictionary, if you want to have a look at their definition of that, is that any presumption that is being quietened of any claim being made or having been made or will be made in the future. And that is really, in a nutshell, what it is that this does. Now, because it quietens all of those claims to titles, it also, it, it also quietens, obviously, the same, the very same stroke of, the, of your thumb, that it's you have quietened the presumption that you have been making that legal has any validity to it whatsoever. So this only, people come to this point here we would suggest only if you've exhausted every other rabbit hole that you could possibly go and wash yourself through, go and infect yourself with as much of this man-made definition as you possibly can. And then when you see that there is no legal recourse or remedy in any of that for you, because you have to re remove your rights in order for you to exist or appear to exist in a dead fiction system, why would you? Why would you invest mm. any more energy in, in uh, trying to understand that which has no standing? Yeah. Okay. And so it just save your time and energy really is what I'm saying. All of this work has, and these precedences and this time that we do put into this is to help to, to, to create a place of initiation for other people, a point of start, a point to start mm. on for other people where they don't have to go and do what we did over the last 10 years. You, yeah. the, the people who are coming into this now, you're inheriting 10 years of not just my energy and effort, but all of these other people's as well, who have done these steps for you. Because, so you're not starting off back the part where we were when we first started this, which was the com the commercial part, you know, we had to we had to uh, use their commercial code in order for them to entrap them with it, um, and uh, you don't have to do that. You you're inheriting a, a, a you're coming into this at a step, which is the restoration of rights equivalent part of the process that we're at, and in fact we're even beyond that point now. And we'll, and I can only say that because you are getting your electricity bills discharged and payments paid into your trust account by the corporate government simply because they haven't got anything else in order for them to be able to do, to utilise any other accounts in order for them to underwrite themselves to appear real, to have some kind of implied authority. And so what's going on now is the, what should have been going on all along is that there was a charge uh, that they had created for the supplying of the electricity at the property where you live. Now, most people don't aren't aware of the fact that you your every town, city, country, house is on a grid, and that electricity doesn't go anywhere except around the grid. You are not using anything; it, you are passing it on. It's a it's a continuous line of current. It doesn't deplete and it goes around and we've got uh, a case file reference number thanks to somebody over here where I am at the moment who uh, was party to a case regarding this where they'd put a meter on the property um, as, the, as it came in and a meter on the property as it went out and they metered that there was that it was it was the same there was nothing it didn't disappear it wasn't used and the, the, these people were bought off uh, who have got this uh, 
uh, they were put under a gagging order so they weren't able to speak about it but somebody who was privy to that information could so we've got a case of our reference number for anybody who wants to refer to that um it's a re re rebutting the presumption that you've been sold that you owe somebody something the electricity yeah. does not deplete you're on a circuit the gas comes out of the rock that is implied to you're implied to have a share of that rock which is what yeah. they're using on the stock exchange so why would you then assign your consent to these terrorists to terrorize our rock so because they use the rock as collateral, the gold, the oil, the silver, the, the, the corn, the wheat, the cotton, inside their stock exchange, um, uh, to enslave us all with and contaminate, uh, contaminate our environment with. And why would we give our share, if, if we have got a share, I mean, for me, it's, it's a complete ludicrous idea that somebody came along and carved this rock into pieces and said, here's your bit and here's your bit. Nobody's ever done that. Um, might have been done in secret and hypothesized about, but whose rock is it anyway to come along exactly. and carve it up? So yeah. e even if I did make a claim that I've got a share of this rock, I, I, I can't substantiate it. Yeah. So who can substantiate any claim? It turns out none of us can. So why don't we all stop trying to substantiate a claim, whether that's I've got an imaginary friend and his name is God or Allah or you know Jehovah or whatever. And it, yeah. I don't care what it is that you call it. I don't care what it is that you believe in. As long as you don't cause harm or loss or damage, now we're back in the law, aren't we? So yeah. if I mm -hmm. come to you and I knock on your door and I say, hey, you, you've got a, I've got a piece of paper here I've created an imaginary debt for you, and now I'm going to kick you out of your right to shelter. I can do that because you've all agreed to put your right to shelter behind the legal fiction inside mm -hmm. the land registry and buy it back as a privilege. So you became a tenant in your own life via the bank with a mortgage and um, taxes and council mm -hmm. tax for your yeah. right to exist. So, wow. you know, yeah. why would you do that, people, is, is, is really when you get to this point where you've done it for so long and you see the, the, the way that this, the structure works, the matrix, and the, the, back, the accounting system that's going on in the background, which we can show you, we can talk about all of that if we want to, but it's really about what you're going to do about it that I'm more interested in. So if these accounts in this accounting system that creates this slavery system appear as real in our communities is uh, uh, it works in a certain way then what if you all learned how it worked and what if you had your own accounting system that countered their accounting system with so whatever was going in those boxes over there in their system uh, created the profits and the loss which is what they need to in order for them to account for themselves, all about the bottom line, all about laundering uh, these equitable accounts um, that nobody even knows that they've got. And it all comes down to profit, obviously. Uh, how much profit can I make from persecuting you with false claims? But it turns out that it's actually ourselves that we're persecuting ourselves. And then blaming somebody else, our imaginary friend called the government, for doing it. So. The point that we're at now is even past the restoration of rights point, which if we were using UCC, which Uniform Commercial Code, which is the code that they used to claim this rock with for the most recent laundry service of 1934 Securities and Exchange Commission Act. So if you want to go and have a look at that, you need to know probably two or three things. Quiet title, the Securities and Exchange Commission Act, which is uh, what we've been enslaved under this Nazi regime with since 1934, while we all pretended that we were free. Um, and I would say the Indenture Act. Now, anything... Uh, what, indenture. What year was the Act? Oh, what, what Security year was that? Exchange Commission Act is 1934. 1934, 35. The police are on that, the, what love? Security. the police are under the Security and Exchange Commission Act. All of they? them are. All of the, yeah. the so 
who is why do we mention uniform commercial code um security and exchange commission act is uniform commercial code it's the legislation that they wrote uh in an attempt to lay claim to the rock for the outstanding debt that was incorporated and incurred by us from the first world war that allowed for this laundry mechanism to be revolved once more to assume all of our rights and our, uh, that's when we became enslaved in commerce and everything that falls upon this rock and everything within the rock you can go and read these corporations filings down to each mineral deposit that they've scanned it for um each gold reserve water deposit you can go and see the hellenic republic one is is a brilliant one if you enjoy that kind of stuff uh Sorry, you, can you, can you say that again hellenic republic? republic hellenic h-e-l-l -L, yeah it's the what used to be known as greece okay so h-e-l-l-e-n-i-c -L -L -E i-c -E yeah hellenic republic filing inside the security exchange commission and it's hundreds of pages long and it describes this southwestern peninsula of europe uh once known as alada greece all of these different names um and down to its mineral deposits and how much it's worth and and that's a really great exemplification example of of how we've allowed this that we don't know to be defined into these titles um, and then we're all going to squabble and fight and kill each other over we're talking about the same thing guys you know the apple is red mm -hmm. uh, but you might call it a coconut milo but because you speak a different language or you've got a different definition for something why mm -hmm. are we killing each other for it yeah yeah that's the point <laughs> exactly. so we, we don't you know it, and we, the reason the, the answer to that is because we've been indoctrinated with fear of words and what they mean and the, and how we've allowed them to divide us um what this does it brings you all back to that point before you start to define yourself as you're indefinable aren't you before you got in this body or before you adopted this mindset you didn't know who you were, you, you know, and you still don't really. You just think it's all hearsay. You've been told by a group of people that this is your mom, this is your dad, you know, that. So we don't need to go through that. And we don't really want yeah. to be wasting our time with people who do need to go and learn all of those things. And I don't mean that in a rude way. I just mean that, that you know, if you want, if you don't know about the straw man, there's loads of stuff out there. Go. We, we don't want. We don't want to be talking about straw men, commercial code. Vatican, ecclesiastical, all of those things, administration. We want you to come to this when you've got your mind around to all of that and say, right, okay, what bit of that I comprehend or not is irrelevant. I know it's slavery and that'll do for me. What am I going to do about it? ULC. Okay. Yeah. And that's it. Mm -hmm. So um, once you've got to that point, that's great. You're going to now use your equitable rights that you have just assigned back to yourself to discharge all of the charges that your government should have been doing but didn't yeah. fail to perform it so any contract that i had anyway is void even if i didn't have a contract and i'd entered into it knowingly which i haven't it would be void because I, you failed to perform it mm. So, so once we um, once we go through the process of um, completing the form um, and we sign up, um, for example, uh, contacting sort of any one of the um, organisations, banks or bailiffs, uh, the, the process of that would be. Yeah. So, so what what we're talking about is your that matrix system of their accounting has suddenly got something inside it that they don't have the right of use of. So where they were getting you to claim something that mm. isn't yours and use it, they, when you give them Minister M of N and say, I'm Minister M of N at this address, I'm the liability holder, I've just defined myself as indefinable in their system. Minister would M of that N... Be would that be through Pardon? a letter? We, we would uh, um, communicate with them through like a letter to them or? 
how would we sort of uh, make that how, how would you um, do it at the moment if you if you you're going to move house let's say you move house what do you, what do, you do when you yeah. move house um yeah <laughs> depends if you're buying it renting it you know you obviously take stuff out the house and you, you no, know no, you, for uh, utilities how do you so you just asked me a question about how do we contact these people? So I've just you've just moved yeah. in now as Minister Emma Venn, haven't you? Minister Emma Venn has yeah. just moved in to occupy your mind, really. Yeah. Okay, so you're now the occupier of this liability, this account, this electricity bill, is Minister Emma Venn's. Hello, I'm Minister Emma Venn. I've just moved in at this address. Can you please update your records? Hmm. Okay. And, and, and that would be the the, the sort of name that would use Mr. Emma Venn on Minister. No, Minister. Minister. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. yeah, yeah. I get you. And, um, so, and, and so if they want to abbreviate it, the wonderful thing about Minister is that Minister is a wonderful thing because Mr., Ms., Mrs., Ms., it's all an abbreviation of Minister, isn't it? If you want to define it as that. Right. Now, this comes down to your definition. Well, this is about self-determination. And we've talked about this just recently, about glossary is so important that you start to all define yourselves yourselves. And so to avoid misrepresentation and to avoid to being assumed to mean something that I didn't even know I could possibly be meant just by saying the word understand, or I didn't know yeah. that I said, if that's my given name, I meant I've given you all away all of my rights by the backs of privilege. I didn't know those things because nobody gave us that dictionary yeah nobody taught us that so if we're using words of babylonian definition of black's law dictionary of legalese isn't it better that we stopped using that and said okay, okay oh don't ask me any questions in a language i don't understand simply that mm. and the minister been, it suggests that Exactly that, that we're Minister Emma Venn, Minister Emma Venn, in their system, you are inheriting the right of use of a title that is a quiet, that quietens commercial claim. Okay. Now, what well, so it doesn't do... Name, uh, to, in, we're, so in essence, we're changing our name um, to these different uh, bodies. No, in, in essence, you are, you are quietening the claim that you have been making of unsubstantiated claiming right so for example the you know the bank account that i've currently got is under the the name of the trust you know this this full caps name um to discharge That's not a trust. okay so that, that your bank account is not in the name of a trust the last name first and the first name last is a legal entity identification title lei number it has a, a number associated with it, which is your birth certificate number, your NHS number, yeah. and your national insurance account number. This is a triad of trusts, then, and it's those account numbers. The, the, the Those trusts, or those circles on a piece of paper, are split in half. A one holds the title, one half is regarding the title and the liability of the operating of that trust and the other half represents the asset and the equity. And they, by putting that line down the middle, they divided you into those two parts. You're putting those two parts back together and you are removing everything out of those circles that has been, you've been putting into their circle, but they've been putting, you've been crediting their circles with data all your life. And so the bank account, for example, is a, a liability so what do you get out of it you are that that last name first first name last is the liability holder in due course for all of the liabilities that are being created in the background for this account and that's why you have to pay and use for your currency and you pay charges and you pay the taxes and you pay the, the cost of living Mm. So you can tell you what it is now that uh what you would do there is you have another bank account you have there's, a, there's i'm not going this part i'm not going to disclose on here because this is our, in our private banking part this is the part of the trust that's under non-disclosure yeah. we don't talk about 
how our little mechanism works on here. Yeah. Or, 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 you know, you just see, you see how it works. You get it explained in your account as you open an account. And so there's criteria. We don't just give these to anybody, obviously. And there's criteria that you need. You are underwriting your own account from this year on with five hours a week into right. your community. The minute that those five hours a week have not been put into your community and they're going to be recorded, um, it, the, the account will be suspended and the, immediately any accounts that anybody's put, it, let's say this address with Minister of Event at this address for council tax hasn't done their five hours a week in their community at one of the county's credit exchanges, then the, the account will be suspended and the council tax Will, will notification will go back to the previous occupier at that address and you will be the liability holder for everything that comes after that point because it really is it's such a shame that we've had to get to this for the last since 2015 we've done this on trust and everybody said yeah we'll put our five hours in yes we'll do this yes we'll, we'll put mm -hmm. our contributions in and they haven't if they had this would have been over ages ago but because they're not people do not honor their word which is what we're talking about at the beginning of this um then obviously we've got to it we've got to say to people enough's enough already you know it, it's one thing it's standing there saying it can't say um, one thing and do another yeah well it's one thing to stand there and say i need your help i've got i'm up to my eyes in debt i don't know which where to turn i feel like killing myself and we say look we can help you out here can you make an agreement with us we'll give you five hours of our time if you give us five hours of yours they say yes mm -hmm. we'll give you that it take and take and take much more than five hours and they, there's nothing Thank coming you. back in I, so I, so sure. it's, I, it really is staggering that, that if you can discharge all of your charges of five hours of your life and you take this opportunity to do that and do these steps and then you go and put 55 hours of your time back into the slavery system so you can take the slave tokens and you you overheads were a grand a month and you've got a grand in your pocket and you go down to b q or you go to tk max and you put a grand back in the system you are the enemy of your own freedom and that's why we've got to because we have allowed that to go on We've we, we've facilitated people actually discharging our services because they've gone back and put it in the shop and fed the corporations again. So all we've done is created uh, 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 we, we, we credited the slavery system by helping these people to get a thousand pounds of slavery back in their pocket that would have normally gone to let's say the gas and water that let's say the mortgage company, but our wonderful debt slave has gone off and, and put it all, I don't know, bought a, bought a load of GMO food down at the supermarket and bought a load of plastic crap and had their fingernails done with, you know, petrochemicals. So, so can, you know, it really is about a, a return on our investment. What are we all getting back? And where is our energy going? Why would we? invest back in these corporations when we've just gone through the processes of discharging all of the charges and, and retiring from crediting them why then would i go because it's convenient yeah but i've got all of this time and energy back now so i could turn around and say well i've got the time to go and see a grass-fed farmer uh a, a, you know a supplier of grass-fed organic beef and an organic food i can even grow my own organic food i can get some chickens i can grow some create some veg boxes i or I can just sit on my phone and be a keyboard warrior looking at all of the other shit that are no longer appropriate in my life because I've got to this point. There's absolutely no point in anybody doing this if you're going to carry on doing the same thing that you were doing before at all. We, don't, mm. we, we do not want to know the account will be suspended because you will not be doing what it is that you said that you're doing. So we've had to come down, you know, I've, I've I've had a lot of hassle from all of you other people in the community who said that they've had enough as well because we're going back to the same people month in, month out, saying, can you put an extra bit in because nobody's put any 10% in. So the structure is this. I've got a yeah. thousand pounds or 600 pounds or 10,000 pounds a month going out. I've discharged all of those liabilities using this structure by doing that a simple step that we just talked about at the beginning there press send yeah. that creates the assignment of consent 
it sends you a, 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 a kind of credit account number and a minister and the VEN number with the assignment of consent. So you've we, we've given you our trust then based on the fact that you've said to us, if you can do this for me, I'll be free and I'm more than happy to give five hours of whatever it is that I've been doing, the slavery system, into my community to, su yeah. to support the growing and creating of my own community away from needing slave tokens. That's what that's what the offer is. Anybody who don't want to use slave tokens and get rid of the corporations, here we are. Um, and in return for that, then uh, I can expect to discharge all of my charges. I used to have 10,000 slave tokens going out or a thousand, and now I've got them in my hand. I am still working for the corporation or doing the job that I was doing. I haven't changed anything at this point. And I'm putting 10% of that into my community pot, into my kindness credit account, so that we can open shops, so we can do whatever it is that we need to do with a very small amount of slave tokens. What you're actually doing is you are using 1% of your life to support the rest of it, 99% of your life, whether that's 10% of the amount of slave tokens that you're using in your sweat equity, or five hours a week instead of 55 hours a week, or, you know, growing food for people uh, and yourselves and your family or whatever it is you're free to do it and and so you know for me it's a no-brainer that i can come and use this structure um which is really using your own intellectual property your own sweat equity your own uh creation out of their system you've, you've retired from credit in their system with your creation your potential creation and giving it freely to people and so, mm. you know, you turn around to somebody and say, right, okay, I'm going to rent a house off you, 500 quid, 700 quid, 1,000 pounds a month. What are you going to do with that money? Well, I'm going to pay my gas, water, electricity, council tax, and then I've got to go to work as well as rent out my house because that's just to cover this house. And so I've got to go and do a job as well to cover my own house. So really I've got two grand a month, a grand for the house that I live in and a grand for the house that you're going to live in. And so I've got to do however many hours it is to cover the overheads of 2,000 slave tokens a month going out. And yeah. um, and you're going to give me 500. So I've got to go and five, find another 1,500. We're talking financial logic now. So what if I gave you a rock instead and that rock was worth the same as 2,000 slave tokens worth of credit a month? And I stayed in your house instead of giving you 500 and you still having to go off and find 1500 more to add to it you've got the choice then mr landlord to turn around and say well actually i can just retire now because she gave me a rock she's exercising the right of use of the, the shelter i'm standing surety to that she hasn't made a claim to the house she doesn't say she wants to own it she just wants to exercise the right of use of it and by having her in my house where it was going to be beneficial for me in this column of 500 it's now just that rock and her being in my house has just discharged all of those liabilities. That is what you've all got. And you say, well, I don't know how to make any money. I don't, I, you know, I'm going to have to go back to work. This is your job. This, this is, you know, replace the word job. This is how you support yourself and your family by using this kind of credit account and ULCT structure and pay it forward to other people. And then those people in your community, do they going to give you what it is that you need? Because you've mm -hmm. helped them. They don't need you. Or what you've done is you've stood surety to other people's liabilities, discharge those charges that those liabilities are causing for that individual and set them free. I couldn't think of a better job in the whole universe to be able to go and knock yeah. on somebody's door and say, hello. Uh, I'm Minister M of N, and I don't know whether you're aware of Universal Community Trust becoming a secure party creditor to Her Majesty's government. And that's the reason why you're getting all of this £600 paid into your accounts. The electricity bill crisis, because we forced the government to act as it should, or it was going to lose that little column as well for them to be able to use that laundry service was to, because that that is the final blow to them and that's how we know how close we are now for self-determination self-determination in our communities because it's down to you guys where do you you know where do you invest your energy who do you credit what what, what kind of products and corporations and services and 
producers do you support? So by going and saying to these people um, in our communities, just by going on this website here, you too can discharge all of your liabilities, your gas, your water, your electricity, your council tax. Um, and, you know, they're going to put their 10% in of what they've saved then. And if you do need some slave tokens to say, right, okay, community, as a collective, what about this for an idea? Let's go and rent a room, do a presentation, or let's go and rent a shop and help the people who have got the shop to learn how it works. And so that they can, over time, we could drop the amount of slave tokens that they need because every week, every month, they're coming and saying, all oh, right, I've got this electricity bill now in Minister Emma Venn's title. And I'd like to do the same for my gas or oh, my water or oh, my mortgage. So we take it step by step with everybody because it's you need to see it to believe it, even though it's believing and seeing yeah. and vice versa. That's the thing, isn't it? It's like actually walking the steps and sort of seeing actually, you know, being on, on the on this side of the process, you know, to actually picture you know the the steps and understanding it um it it, it needs walking through doesn't it really yeah um, and that's why that we you know we wanted you to document it so you've got if you go now and uh, so what i would recommend you do now rob is are you videoing it so you've gone to the, onto the new website yes i have yeah <laughs> right so why don't we do that then why don't we do your assignment and you record the step there of what it looks like at the front end. And then I can explain a little bit about what's going on in the background. Not too much, because you don't really need to know. I press a button, it adds that information onto a document, or I call 1367 say, hi, can you just do that? <laughs> do an assignment. Um, and you get it back in your inbox. It's that simple. Yeah, absolutely. We could do that. I just uh, have a couple more questions. That One's from uh, uh, one yeah. of the ladies in Stroud that came, and another one that I've got, because well, I'll start with my one. I don't, I'm not paying the utilities or the council tax as it is. So, so in relation to um, uh, savings a month, I'm not going to be saving, you know, from, from things that I'm just, the only thing, I mean, I'm going to be obviously relieving myself from the, the debt of, uh, it's credit card debt, you know, that has gone to debt recovery companies and I've got an overdraft I'd like to, to, to uh, discharge. Um, but yes, what, so the question is, in relation to how your five hours a week to the community or putting 10% of what you're saving into your kindness credits, can is there like room for manoeuvre there regarding like, can I put more hours into the community instead of the 10% that I'm not saving because I'm not, we, you know, we I'm would not rather, uh, discharging? Okay, yeah. I, the, the most important part of all of this is the hours that we give freely, more than anything else. So yeah. if you turn around, if you turn around and say, right, that's it, I'm going to be minister and then, uh, and I want to do this full time, and I, I, you know, oh, that's a different ball game from somebody just saying, right, okay, well, I'm going to carry on working the slave system, and I'm going to carry on doing 55 hours a week, um, I'm, but I'm going to put 10% of a, a grand in or whatever that I've saved. The, the, it's about what you, it's the self determination. We would be. Uh, we would be the same as the system if we stood there and said that we're going to dictate every, to everybody how this is. It's up to you. This is your community. Yeah. What can yeah. you give? You know, your energy. If you if you haven't got a load of gas, water, electricity, council tax and a load of charges, great. We're really happy about that because it means that we haven't got a load of work to do to discharge those charges. So if, it, if that means that you're uh, freer, let's say already in these other columns if we were to divide our energy into these columns which is what's going on in our system um and and account for our energy in in uh, uncontaminated form i call it it's free energy then it goes much further doesn't it because you're not i'm not having to say to you oh you know can you go on next wednesday to a court case for us as minister and event down in stroud and you're like mm, well not really because i'm still doing 55 hours a week uh, well if that's mm -hmm. the case you're doing 55 hours a week then and you put your 10 percent in but that part of that 10 percent could go into the car for fuel or whatever to get somebody who Someone is doing it there. yeah exactly. yeah okay so, i get it yeah yeah so it's, um you know, yeah. We would love more, uh, more, uh, the more energy that we've got in that 
five hours a week column tells us that more and more people are using less and less slave tokens. Yeah, yeah. That's well, I've, I've, you, like I said, I've, I've been out of this, I've, as much as I uh, have been able to uh, not be in the system, you know, and using slave tokens. Uh, you know, I mean, in terms of what I'll buy, it's be clothes from a charity shop or something like that. But you know, there's not much that mm. I. There's not much that I go in and and uh, yeah, but look at the value. Into... Look at the value of your hours instead. Your hours yeah. would be diminished. Your energy would be diminished to eight quid an hour in that slavery system yeah. in order for you to, oh, yeah, to yeah. contribute ten percent. And we would rather you imagine how many people it is that you're going to be able to help by doing what it is that you're doing with your energy and recording, documenting this, and getting it out there. It, yeah. It's you know. Our our energy is unlimited and priceless until we start to limit it and price and put a price on it and, and, mm -hmm. and, and you know diminish it. And so it's really it's about okay. uncapping that unlimited priceless energy and releasing it. That's what kindness creates is it lets that energy out in, into the universe yeah. to flow and create instead of being banked up somewhere and, and used to create terrorism with. So um, that's on the you know brokering open your credit file and discharging people's liabilities for mortgages and things as a as a minister who's gone through all of the training and so that you it doesn't matter what situation somebody comes with for you to be able to remedy you can minister it because you've got and if you have get reached that point where you're like mm, I'm not really sure about what to do with this part because I haven't done it myself. Every single one of our ministers, of every single one of the people who come in here and, and then give advice or walk you through the steps or hold these meetings, have done the steps to, uh, mm -hmm. or they won't talk about them. And they'll say to yeah. you, look, that, that thing that let's say, you know, I'm on benefits and you speak to a minister who was working, for example, they'll say, well, I, I don't know about that. Let me speak to one of the ministers who went through this, they were on benefits. And you will speak to somebody who is like for like scenario with you. You'll hear all of it on the Zooms. You'll hear the police stole my car because I didn't have it re recorded right or I gave a driving license or you know, it is trial and error for each one. Just because it works for one individual, if you don't follow those steps and you add to those steps, they've got loads of scenarios for you to, so, to, to take you through if you do this, because this is what people did. If you add to the administration of this, you will, you're back in the system. Anything. Right. There, there is a structure here. Why would it's a success system that it never ever fails? Okay, so so that that's that's that sort of leads me to the next question. So my my driver's license is uh, is running out, and they want to renewal by the end of the month. So I just I don't do that either. You can do that if you want. This is also a thing that I don't want people to get the wrong message about. Well, have, well, because one one second. There's, just, there's, there's, reason, the right there's a reason why there's a, there's a reason why it's um a bit tricky because I'm not I'm not. The owner of the car it's someone who's left me on her insurance um so so yeah i, I, I wonder like right. uh let's get so this might... i end away with your mind yeah. that legal fiction is not yours yeah you've been using it haven't you yeah okay what, what are you doing with this structure now then well i want to stop using it and okay. and yeah. So what what are you asking me? What about using it again for? <laughs> well, <laughs> it is that simple. You can involved. use it. I just want to get into that position where, where where I can answer this next bit. You can use it if you you can use anything as long as you reserve your rights from being implied to be universally granted to underwrite any additional commercial activity in an administrative system. That would not exist unless you didn't reserve your rights. So there is something called the release of commercial instrument document that we've got. Now, if you wanted to pass the port with a normal passport, there's not even anybody there to look at anymore. But if you wanted to pass the port with a passport, or you, uh, for ease of convenience, let's say, or you wanted to just throw your driving license down on the table and say, right, okay, I'm making a claim with that against somebody that you can still use commercial titles. Why? 
because all commercial titles is what was secured in 2020 by Universal Community Trust that were recorded by HM government and agencies thereof as asset. So when we secured them, we said to them, there is a debt of 10 quadrillion owed by your corporation to the people that was once employed as the population of the UK. And you haven't settled this debt, HM government. We've given you plenty of opportunities to do your job. You've incurred all of these charges. And now according to your code, we've got a right to secure you. So we secured them. Okay, great, great. Okay, so, so that, all right. So that's the point that you're starting off at. So that title, yes, it is a title that belongs to Crown Corporation or did. Yeah. But who does Crown Corporation yeah. now belong to? Back to the people. That's all we did. It, we restored yeah. the rights back to where they should have been, which are back in the hands of the people. But the people don't know this because the people are looking at the media, mainstream media, and the, the goggle box hasn't told me this yet. So I don't know. Mm -hmm. So that's why you know we're trying as best we can to try to get these messages out there, get these messages out there to people. So your time is your, and you know your publicity is priceless to to universal law. So um, go in and using this release of commercial instrument document, you're saying yes, it's got my face on it, and I'm using this with all my rights reserved. And I'm you. You want to play the game of commerce? Here you go. I'm playing the game of commerce with all my rights reserved, and that's the difference between you and Jacob Rothschild. That's the difference between you and the private corporations because they have reserved all of their rights. They've got no liability, and they are causing you all, us all, to be the liabilities holders in due course of their capitalism of our rights. Mm. So we can use the, the commercial instrument document. We uh, we would need one of them yeah. on our person if we yeah. were to use any one of those other instruments. Or yeah, but what or we've done, device. what we've done now, is because we refuse to do that, and we, they, I force them to traffic me through customs across four or five different imaginary borders and dump me on the shores of what was once implied to be UK um, without any paperwork. So that bro broke the borders. We dissolved the borders. And that's why, you know, lots of people were saying, you know, with well, loads of immigrants and people coming into our, our jurisdiction. Look, look, there's no jurisdiction anymore. It's all, all under universal law. We are one tribe. We are the tribe of the people of El Las, the Rock of Light. And, and, you know, we've only allowed ourselves to be divided and, and full of fear of one, of one another because of man-made Vatican definitions. So mm -hmm. that would be recognized. Um, I'm, I'm traveling back and forth from Mexico. I've got, I've got family and children out there. Um, you use it, obviously, needing to use passport and whatnot, whatnot else. Um, to, to get on that plane and, and get off it again, you know. Well, this, this uh, is we've... something that we've, we're now in this position. This is a new, this has only just happened. We've only got this precedence in October. So, you know, give us a bit of time and let's Maybe. let's have a look yeah. at how we're all <laughs> going to do this. <laughs> um, you know, yeah. I, my head's still spinning from the, the, what it is that they've done and, and just trying to uh, see what it is the universe has got uh, as as would likely to use it in this way or this way or this way because it's just universal now and it's like can we do it like this or this or this <laughs> so we've got a few and we don't want to come to any of you and um, this is why we won't come to you none of us will talk about anything that we haven't done ourselves none of us mm. and right. and so uh, you know the, the, those that did and those that do have gone very quickly it, we, 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 it's something that we will not accept because it's not okay. Hypothesis is not okay. Speak, talk, you mm -hmm. walk, but walk and walk, you talk. So go and yeah. walk, you talk, and then come back and tell us. Don't stand there and go, oh, yeah, I think you should this. I watched this and this and hearsay and all of this. We're not interested in anything that you've heard from anywhere else. We're interested in seeing a video of you doing the steps and, and how that panned out for you and then coming back and saying, right, okay, well, you know, uh, oh, he got arrested. Okay, he's got arrested. What, what's the situation? We're all waiting for you 
you know, with the paperwork, stand surety to you to rebut the presumption because you are, but you belong to a community that has restored its rights, and the agencies know that. You lot don't need to know. You lot need to know that. We need to know that as a as a lot, let's say. But they, we don't need to know how it works. The system, the, the accounting system works in a particular way and we know how that works. That's our five hours to you. Now, if we can yeah. work that accounting system to stop those that you being accounted as a Vatican debt slave, to set yourselves free, off you go the rest of you and bring us some organic food and make us a cup of tea while we keep this at bay until it doesn't exist anymore in anybody's minds that are keeping it because the people are the ones who are still supporting it. The people that we've always had been, they're standing there and saying, oh, look what the government's doing to me, look what the police are doing to me, look what the court is doing to me. You're paying, you are allowing and consenting to it because you're using the name and you're using their fiat currency. So it's, you know, a big mess and we've just got to clear it up, that's all. So yes, use the release of commercial instrument, document, um, reserving all of your rights while you do that. There's some videos on Universal Law Community Trust on the YouTube and the M of N channel. Um, if you go on there, there's one, it's Lancashire Police being put on notice about uh, and, and that. Lots of people like that one because it's, it's very logical. It, um, um, and you can just hear the things that I'm saying and, and, and listen to it again and again and again. Do some yeah. role play. You get a welcome pack. When you move through these steps and discharge those liabilities, you get your Zoom links, you come on the training, we send you training packs, we've got leaflets, you've got um, people who are doing these exchanges to be able to tap into and, and, and communicate with. There's absolutely no reason why we're still using their system for anything as far as I'm concerned when we've got all of this and all of these people's energy just need to people put it into practice. Um, you, you mentioned something as well, uh, certainly in, in the previous website, I don't know if it's a relative, um, that you'd um, send someone around to install a kindness credit meter, like an engineer. Yep. Like, yep. So and th that would literally be like a like some sort of like gas electrical engineer that would come yeah, and change the meter? Yeah, so let's say, so we've got, let's say Fred comes along. Fred, Fred, Fred's a plumber or he's, a, he's an electrician. Yeah. And he's put in his five hours a week, hasn't he? Yeah. So we can turn around to Fred and say, hi, Fred, you know, those five hours that you said that you were going to do in uh, Stroud or Birmingham or Gloucester or wherever it is that you've said that the area is that you'll cover. Can you go to this address, please, and fit one of the meters? Because we've got a new Minister of event and a trust account here at this address. And... Uh, it means that the electricity or the gas company can when let's go back a little, little step here so who most people know about the rights of implied uh, uh, the implied right of access being removed now mm. even when they stick those signs upon their gates so for those of you who don't know people have been using common law putting these uh, signs up saying uh, right of implied access removed no trespassing now who put that sign up? A Vatican debt slave did. Why did a Vatican debt slave put that sign up? Because the house has still got the Vatican debt slave recorded there at council tax and at land registry. Has a legal fiction or a corporation got any rights? No, nope. we all stand there shouting, legal fiction haven't got any rights. So how can a legal fiction then retract the right to trespass or imply that it's got some rights that have been removed? It cannot. Okay. So you're all working in complete double degree, uh, oxymoron, high uh, contradiction with these yeah. signs. The if there is a process that goes in the background, they have to do a risk assessment. I I'm a debt recovery company. I have to check some pieces of information before I come up your drive. So the point of reference is the property at the address that people are saying you've got revoked your right of access to is the meter but the meter is trespassing on your suppliers most people know so if you remove that meter have i got any right implied or otherwise 
to come up your drive. Mm. Yes, if wait a minute, yes, if the if my checks show there's a legal fiction at that address because it comes up it's unoccupied. Nobody lives there. I can do what I like because nothing happened here. You're a no thing. You pretend right, to be the minister M O N lives there. Yeah. Yeah, but Minister M O N lives there. Uh oh, now I've got a big problem. So Minister M O N cannot be used in litigation. Justice Stein says that, not us. Okay. So Justice Stein, when we put coronavirus in the court and said that it's being used to unlawfully incarcerate people with, they came back and said, you can't use coronavirus in claims because the burden of proof that it exists is too great. Thank you very much. And though, by the way, you can't use universal community trust because we don't recognize it in our system and you can't use Minister of Event for litigation. It was the best exemplification of the... Uh -huh unlawfulness of everything that the legal system stood for and that is on the uh, a video that we've got where we took the queen's bench into the our ministry of remedy jurisdiction and nailed them to their own cross they nailed themselves to their own cross of covid and dissolved it and so that was gone but you know uh, whether that's uh, you want to pick that part out if somebody's trying Pardon? That's the precedent now. It's kind of like yeah. it's been set that they've, they've made their ruling on it and it's they've done themselves. Yeah, these are all precedences. We're, you know, uh, and we've got quite a bundle for anybody um, who wants to make themselves a, a travel pack or a rebuttal pack or um, if anybody comes oh, yeah, and tries absolutely. to. That would be very handy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you have you had your welcome pack? Have I sent you a welcome, a training pack? I know you weren't no, yet. Um, you haven't done an assignment. No. Yeah, we'll do that in a moment once we finish right. these questions. Yeah, I mean, in fact, okay, the, the, the only other, the only other question that I had here was was I think we've sort of answered in a roundabout way with regards to it was from Karen in Stroud who said, uh, "How do the kindness credits work in relation to the stated five hours a week?" Mm. But I think we've, it, we've answered that sort of um, every which way. I think. What about yeah. your mum? Has your mum got some questions? She's not around right now. Um, oh. We might have another chat uh, at another time, if that's right with her. Um, yeah, of course, yeah. yeah. Okay, great. Okay, so well, I, I'm I'm happy to go ahead and do this uh, um, assignment of consent. Is anyone else on the call? Has anyone else got questions beforehand? The the other thing, just before we do, no. is e even even uh, you said that, I, that you sorry, carry on. Oh, I can wait. Uh, yeah, I had a question. Um, no, carry on with the question. Sorry. Oh, thanks. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm um, starting to understand um, some of this, but um, I am in a position where we've moved into a property that we're renting from a friend of mine um, in Stroud here. Uh, we've been here four months and I've not contracted with any of the you know utilities, council tax, etc. But really, the, the, the challenge I have is um, is we have no contract with the land the house owners it was just like well yeah you can come and live here now they want me to sign up to a tenancy agreement um which includes paying utilities and council tax so i'm going to meet with my friend nick who owns the house and he's not onto this and try to you know really just share with him where i'm at and how i see things and how okay. i'm not prepared to pay these things so i really the question is kind of like how would you you know how would you talk to someone I'd say um, hello, yeah. Nick. Yeah. <laughs> I say, I say, all right, Nick. I'm, I've got a trust, and the trust are going to discharge all of my gas, water, electricity, and council tax if the contract can be put into the title of Minister of Van. Is that all right? Okay, brilliant. So simple. Okay. Yeah, and, and then so I'll have to explain yeah. Minister of Van, which I'll. Well, yeah, Minister. Okay, so let's do yeah. that while we're on the call. Okay. So what what he'll say to you? What is this? What do you mean, Minister? Please. Yep. I change the three one second. Um, so again, I have a trust, and I'm going to I, discharge. Yeah. One, one second, one second. Yeah. On. yeah. Okay. Just uh, okay. I'm just sec, let's let wait a second. Let me just get a little right. let, get a little glass of water while we, he just sorts his battery out. Hang on a sec. Yeah. Sure. Already. Yeah. Battery's good. Okay. Sorry, love. Wait a sec. Okay. So, so um, I've got a I've got a trust yeah and my trust are going to discharge all of my gas my water my electricity and my council tax 
Yeah. And in it, I have to do five hours a week for them in my community in exchange. Yeah. They can tell them yeah. what for. And it, uh, as long as the tenancy agreement is, it's a private tenancy agreement. It's not going to be sent anywhere. Yeah. Between the, so it's going to be between you, Nick, and Minister Emma Venn, whatever your number is going to be. Okay. And then, uh, and that a private agreement will mean that you're covered for uh, in exchange for your five hours, you get all of those charges discharged. So when you said somebody wants a, a contract off you, who is that? Who wants a contract off you? If it's not um, Nick. Yeah, well, his legal person, I guess it would be, wouldn't it? But he doesn't know that. Uh, tell me again. Who's asking you to get a contract? The, the owner of the house, who's a friend of mine. Yeah. So Nick now wants you to get a contract. He wants me to sign a contract. and He sent me a template contract for private tenancy. Um, yeah. Right. Just, I, I think it might be that already. might be coming from his wife. Right, yeah. we've got one already, and so you just explain. And I can even just send you a little email and send you an email over, and you can just forward it on to him. So I've got this from my trust. That would be great. Yeah, because he did say, "Look, are you happy with this? Would you like to change it?" Da, da, da. I could send him that. Yeah, just so um, I've sent that over to my trust, and my trust have said this is the one that we use. If they'd like to change that, what you're doing is you're taking jurisdiction of it. They're agreeing with your terms and conditions, and you're setting out. This is my definition of me exercise my right to shelter and and they you know they will want the problem is if they don't have a copy of a contract the council tax will be they'll become liable for it that's yeah, that's problem. why yeah i don't want to pass them anything onto yeah. them yeah and we yeah. yeah and we don't want that to happen um so ideally we'd like nick to you know realize this himself and do it for not just the house that you're living in but for his own and any other asset that he's got and his wife as well but and so we uh, uh want to help him see how it is that for him it's an insurance for you as well nick because it means that you're not going to get that landed with a bill or them going to try and claim asset that for a charge that simply isn't yours okay Oh, that's brilliant. Thank you so much. That it's, yeah, it always cuts through everything, um, the universal law approach. Thank you. I'll, um, I'll, shall I drop my email into the chat box? Yeah, or you can just give it to me now if you want. Oh, yeah, put it in uh, the chat box so we're not... Yeah. 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 Okay, I'll, I'll do it now. Thank you. Lovely. Right. Okay. And uh, is it a proton? Uh, yeah, it is, yeah. Lovely. Yeah. So, is, have you got another question for me, guys, of the recording? Or is that covered with the answer for Rupert? Or was that? Did have another question if there's time, but I don't want to take up yeah. the message. No, no, you, this is what it's full of. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I, I think you've kind of answered this, but I, I'm just trying to get my head around it. I was um, um, looking at this approach, approach of taking credit credit cards out and then following the process of um, this guy, the credit ninja or whatever he calls himself, to. Um, um, to, to discharge that afterwards um, as a way of enabling me to sort of buy, buy a stone mill so I can mill flour for local people here. Um, um, but, you know, when I went to sign up to apply for a credit card, I've not had one for many, many years. It, it didn't, like, energetically, it didn't feel good. And um, going through that process and then going to have to administer all of the letters afterwards that I'm going to get from them. Um, you know, but it's an opportunity to do something. But like you say, you know, it's it's actually perhaps putting my energy in the wrong place. Um, and maybe there's there's actually other ways to, um, like you say, to um, you want me to get that support. Bring you know? a rock. You want me to bring you a rock to to crush your to using your stone mill. <laughs> Is there a particular kind of rock that I need to bring you? <laughs> granite. Any kind of granite. Okay. Well, there's plenty around. You know, do we need just a wagon? Is there something do you have to set your stall out? What is I it? Have some, you have yeah, I have some friends who, who make them. Yeah. Right. Them okay. Up. So yeah. let's speak to your friends then. Let's go to these people that think that they need slave tokens and say, hi guys. We hear that you need slave tokens to 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 create a a, a stone mill. Yeah. What is it that you need those slave tokens for? Well, because we've got the gas. It's the same story. What a surprise. <laughs> well, we've got a solution to your problem. If you give this stone, to, if you do your work and create this stone, 
then the, the the mill will put a percentage of that that it creates into the community to cover my energy that's been spent to come here to explain this part to you, which means that you're only going to need 25% in slave tokens of what you thought you did for the rock. Yeah. Because we're going to discharge all of those liabilities that that's, let's say, that how much is one of these stones? Uh, well, new, they're normally about 17 grand, but the second hand, I'm hoping it'd be eight to 10,000. Okay, so let's say 10 grand. Uh, but and, and so how much profit is it, uh, uh, you know, we're, so we're going to be asking these people, how much do you keep out of that 10 grand that we're going to give you? Oh, we might keep a grand out of it. Okay, what are you going to do with that grand? Oh, I'm going to pay my gas, my water, electricity, my council tax at home, pay some food for myself so that I can yeah. come back next day and do it all again. Yeah. So, because slavery is slavery, no, no matter which way it's, you know, wherever it's being executed on this rock. So, um, you know, let's go and see these people. This is this is called introducing kindness credits into my community as a credit. And I mean, this that, is our, yeah. you know, this is our minister column, really, where you, so you have these tabs inside your account, um, a minister... You want your ministering documents. Am I, what kind of ministry you're going to do? I might have to go and minister a um, council tax claim for somebody because I've said I've given five hours and somebody's come and put a council tax charge in and they've got a problem at the court. So I might need to go, you know, whatever it is. Uh, what you're going to minister today it might be somebody's got a problem with cancer and they need to create a, a, a connection between the guy who's got the cannabis oil and the individual who's just given me five hours um, hairdressing or you know knitting or whatever it is cooking food for people mm. yeah. who's got cancer and so we give the give the, the oil and so you're stand, it, it's your energy that's standing surety to these exchanges and just we've showed so many times now we put um, one kindness credit into the pot. So it, we, we converted eight pounds into one kindness credit through the, the account. So now we've got one kindness credit sitting in the holding account. And then we had eight, we actually had 10 people uh, in the Zoom. And the one kindness credit represented one kilo of olive oil. So I passed the one kilo of olive oil to another minister in exchange for um, one kilo of honey. So I yeah. got what I wanted, which was the honey. She got what she wanted, which was the oil. Now the, there's a, or somebody over here, let's say they teach Greek. And this, in, Emma Van wanted her child to learn Greek. So the exchange was, uh, one kind of credit and now I'll teach a child Greek okay but I don't really need the money at that point we only lose the energy when we take it out we're just moving the energy around these different accounts in the end we did eight we did nine transactions we actually did 10 uh, which the last transaction was where we turned the kind of credit back into slave tokens to send to somebody who was up a mountain stuck on his back without any fuel onto a visa card. Now we would have normally needed 80 pounds to do 10 transactions at one kind of credit or eight pounds each, but we didn't because we kept our energy in our community. So we only ever needed the one kind of credit converted, it never turned back, it never turned into anything. It just stayed as it was, which was eight quid of somebody's energy. And we just sent it from the Fiat community account we've been held in to the fiat currency account that it was going to be paid out of. That was to show people how our energy was is, is so uh, uh, valuable for exchanges if we keep it in our community. But the minute that we converted, uh, you know, paid the petrol station and they started to pay tax with it, it's gone. If we yeah. keep it in our, in our little circuit, we could use that same little bit of energy that looks like eight pounds in millions and millions of transactions, which is what we're doing. We discharge fiat currency to the same rate that it's been created if we do it like this. And if we don't, we're just compounding fiat currency while we're saying, look at what you're doing to me. I'm blaming everybody else. So, um, Minister Emma Venn would have the uh, 
uh, that liability, that all of the liability goes into Mr. and Ben's name and you become the beneficiary of your soul once more, instead of being the sole beneficiary of uh, the liabilities <laughs> created by the system that has hijacked our souls. So that's the reversal uh, and the system running reverse for, for rebutting these presumptions of our consent. Um, okay. The step on from that, and obviously is you get your training pack, you get your training manual, I would say to you, uh, let's sit down and uh, you know have a one-to-one -one about your situation. Um, I want to talk to you about Zaya. Zaya is this seed that was the original seed that we were, had banned, and they they GMO'd it into flour, into the into the into the seed that they use now for the mainstream flour. Let's say, uh, even the old, uh, you know, they would say it's like a whole grain or uh spell or you know the Z it all came from Zaya and they banned it and the reason why they but they've just allowed it back in the last few years into Greece and that all I can tell you is that it's the most makes the most amazing flower and apparently it creates a uh nutrient in us that does it, it, it activates part of our brain and that's why it's been taken out of our diet much like mm. the cannabis and um, you cannot get it here we've tried and tried and tried it's banned here um and just like they've banned nettles i don't know you're not even allowed to say the word nettle in france because of its ability to be able to be used instead of roundup as a pesticide um and so they are, uh we've got a, a miller and i've worked with this miller a lot we became their supplier instead of uh, like a distributor because they were scared to, people are scared to start to do this because they think they're going to get arrested they think they're going to go to prison da, 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 da. and so i go and i went and did all of that and said okay if anybody's getting prison i'll go to prison for this they couldn't put me in the prison for the, the money exchange so they came with me with other charges instead um and but we, in, in doing this we proved that if you could commercial system put me in the court for kindness credits being black money then i would be doing two life sentences so the i'm the walking proof that that, it, that what we do is is legal but more importantly lawful um and uh, the zaya we put into our shop they call it a shop or outlet and it meant that we were able to get his products into the community without him having to pay any more tax than he already was. We were buying it off him to show how it works at the same price that he was selling it to everybody else, which is two euros a kilo, but we were giving him rocks. So we'd give him four rocks. Each one of those rocks were represented 50 cents. So he needed four of them to represent the two euros. And then he would give me the rocks back and I'd give him two euros and he'd give me the flour. But he gave yeah. me the flower. He gave me the flower first. I gave him the rocks. He gave me the rocks back, and I gave him a receipt that said one kilo of flour, four rocks. <laughs> Brilliant. And it is that simple. So he would then declare, "She's paid me with rocks. How many rocks do you want to the tax?" And it's completely lawful and completely legal. So if I if I say to you, hi, I, I'll give I've got 10 kilos of honey and I would like 10 kilos of Zaya or 10 kilos of your best flower. Is it organic that you that organically grown? Or yeah. is it just brilliant? And you're yeah, growing projects all variety. And it. Well, I was I was growing it in, in Wales, but um don't have land at the moment but uh, a friend of mine's been growing the the old varieties of wheat that i was growing on um so i couldn't get it from him right yeah. and so what, what why what is it what kind of ground do you need for growing um well it's arable so um yeah it'll grow in most places you know um it's it's old old tall straw varieties of wheat so um, um it's pretty hardy right so but generally, and, and, you know generally you need some equipment to do it like you know tractor drill combine that's enough yeah 
Okay, so let's have a chat about that, Rupert. When are you free to go and to, to have a sit specifically about this? I, I, before we get into this bit, have you got any other questions, guys, about uh, dragonfly pictures? About uh, about the, what we no, need I, to I'm cover? Going to go, I'm, just, we've just, I'm just starting to fill out the uh, the assignment of consent uh, part now. We've I've just found all my uh, account numbers and that, so I'm just putting right. that in now. I'm happy to just I'm continue happy. recording. I've yeah, my friend does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. So yeah, especially like um, family living overseas, uh, mm -hmm. and I, you know, I need to get, um, you know, I need to, to offer them, give them sort of um, uh, support, you know, um, mm -hmm. and that support currently is through the slave tokens. Um, well, you'll have more, won't you? It once you've discharged all of the liabilities, so all of your gas, your water, electricity, council tax, your credit card debt. Uh, any you know, mortgage you're going to have more where are you getting your slave token from at the moment i'm really not so i've been doing sort of part-time work and just sort of uh i'm i'm kind of writing and whatnot you know um I'm trying to, what are you uh, sending your family uh, at the moment you have the, the scenario has to be the same scenario i can't just suddenly imagine yeah, the scenario up. sure 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 so <laughs> i'm trying to send them 200 pound a month right so um, where where are you getting that from well, so I have been working part time uh, with my brother, just doing window cleaning. Um, right. uh, yeah, go on. No, no, you, you tell me. Yeah, um, and yeah, I'm, I'm kind of writing. Um, I self published a book, and you know, sort of that's obviously on the Amazon thing at the moment. Uh, it'd be interesting to sort of see whether it could be sort of uh, republished. Right. Yeah, we promote it through you know the community and. Uh, or even given out, really. I think it could be great for, for people to have. Um, for, what, for what, sale, I found, what I found, in all honesty, with this, with this, is that when I gave up the belief that I need slave tokens for anything, it not only did more slave tokens come, but the people who also believe that slave tokens are a thing of the past and should never have been created, they come as well. And so once you've got your, let's say, your presentation of this off pat to give to somebody, you're going to find that you need less and less and less and less of slave tokens. Mm. So right. the, the yeah. yes, of course, your family are going to need some kind of slave token support while we're still using slave tokens and while they're living in another country. Then, of course, you, you know, I've got the same situation with my family living in, in Greece. Um, you know, they, there's only so much support that we can give at the moment because there's only so much, so many people putting five hours a week in. If everybody put mm. five hours a week in and stopped supporting the, the corporations, and they're only oh. doing that because they've got loads of bills, then nobody mm. would need to, any slave tokens, but they can't, they just can't break free. So this is the cushion to make this step then so you're yeah. kind of weaning yourself off the slave tokens if i don't suddenly don't need as many there's all sorts of things that i haven't told you about things to do with your conveyance with your outgoings for things like tax insurance your conveyance your petrol where does the petrol come from is all i'm going to say yeah from the ground right from, from, from the same rock. place from the, the share of this rock they say that you've got what how did shell get their hands on it then mm. yeah through you people get, somehow through through, yeah. through us giving our share to that legal fiction that assigned it to the government that the government then appointed the right of use of that to shell or bp whoever paid the most where's your dividend from that mm. and let's say so now because it, it, now that they're now you've turned the tables on on HMRC and all that kind of stuff, that it's now kind of in essence going back into the trust. Yeah, it is, and that's why you know people are going and saying they don't realise it, but all of these things, all this information, such as going into the petrol station, filling your conveyance up with with, with fuel, and then you turn turn around and you say, well, "Where's your? Are you charging me how much in tax?" Okay. Where is your inland revenue? Where is your license to be a practicing uh, receiver of tax on behalf of HMRC? I haven't got one. 
book to Daisy. I can either arrest you, which I don't really feel like doing because you didn't know, and but now you do. Um, uh, or I can just discharge the charges uh, for the petrol. Uh, well, and so instead of it being 100 quid, knock off all the tax, it's 20 quid. Mm. And so I've got to give you 20 pounds worth, 20 quid to cover the cost of the fuel. But then I've got another problem that my card won't work for this because my card will only work if it's not for a corporation that has falsely claimed the right of use of my share of the petrol from my share of the rock. So now I, my card won't work for that. So now what do you need to do when the card doesn't work? Oh, well, if the card doesn't work, I've got to take some contact details and your number plate. Okay, this is my contact details, Minister on the van. This is my telephone number. You give them my number and this is my email address and there's my number plate. And then and you've got seven days to remedy that 20 quid. And they contact me and say, hello, we had somebody leave the details here. And they didn't have the means to pay. And I say, okay, well, what is it? What's the damage? And they say, well, 20 quid or 100 quid. And I say, well, okay, it's 100 pounds. Can you send me a copy of the receipt? Have a look at the tax. Have you got a, have you got, can you prove your claim? Not, can you just mm. prove your claim that you've got a liability, the charge for, 100 quid with the tax on it and I need your license for tax collection because we haven't given you the authority to act or collect tax on our behalf of our private corporation under the legal fiction system that we have secured and over here I can't see any trace of us actually assigning our consent to UBP or Shell Garage for the share of the rock of the petrol that this transaction used. Mm. So I'm going to need an assignment of consent from our trust to your private corporation to resell our community's asset back to them. Wow, okay. And that's a um, and one, last, and one last question. Um, yeah. So I've not contacted my uh, the banks uh, for like a year and a half and I've not right. received the, um, letters uh, from them. In fact, HM, um, HSBC sort of shut my account down um, and, you know, there was outstanding debt, certainly on the credit card. Um, they took whatever money was in the account. Um, so I've not got access per se to the account anymore. However, so I'm not sure in terms of what uh, debt that they they might be trying to sort of uh, reclaim. Um, but also because I've not contacted Santander for, you know, a year and a half now. Uh, the process would be to, uh, you know, filling out this, uh, the form would be to sort of what, what, log in and see what the current... No, 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 no. They, they don't, this is a really good point. For anybody listening, do not reactivate any dormant accounts in order for you to get a uh, okay. balance. We're not interested. And yeah. you actually, well, you're at that point, obviously we've got, a, it, this is for things like the, you know, they're on your case now and they're sending debt recovery companies or, you know, whatever charges through the letterbox to you still in the legal fiction. If it's gone, mm. if you've already done some of this kind of things yourself, um, where you've, you realize it's not your liability and you've not contracted with them, please don't go back to do, to yeah. join with them again in order for us to get this information. We, it's not that important. The only yeah. thing that they would be getting is the assignment of consent. They would be getting notice that all of these accounts have been assigned to the trust. And then when you've got au fait with it and you've got it off pat, you're going to be the one who's answering your own phone again and saying, hello, it's the minister on the van. And they're saying, well, yeah, would sure. you like to speak to the Vatican debt slave, please? Would you? So I was once the creditor of that account, now retired. And I've assigned all of my equitable rights to minister on the van. Would you like to speak to me as the legal fiction or would you like to speak to me as the minister who can discharge all of the charges and make an offer of settlement? <laughs> Great. <laughs> yeah, well, amazing work being done here. Amazing. It, it's, it's, no, thanks. It's, uh, you know, it's, it's, just, it's just logic, really. And it's really, it, it's wonderful to be able to just share it with people. And now that you're all open to it, it makes my job much easier than it was where I'm standing outside screaming at you all, Marty Grant, that's slaves, eat GMO, <laughs> you know, <laughs> outside Sainsbury's. Um, 
<laughs> and throwing food at you. So <laughs> it's, it's, it, you know, it's much better. Um, and the del- it makes for a better delivery of it rather than the one that they were getting in 2014 about the treaty of Nice. So yes, um, uh, it's great to be able to share this and have such a reception at the other end. So, um, and now, you know, it is that easy. Uh, and I think that people have got to that degree where they, they, they know all about the birth certificate, they know about ecclesiastical law, even in a lot of cases, they just don't know how to stop investing yeah. their energy in it now. And so this is why, let, you know, it, it either really is legal fiction or it's not. If you want to make it real, carry on over there. When you're ready to discharge that mindset and come and grow some food with us and do something really real, then we're here uh, and, and you're welcome. Brilliant. I think I'll stop the recording. Oh, wait a second. I'll just stop. do this. There we go.